Well, hello everyone. So in the past, I showed you how to use four IGBTs to make a full bridge inverter, but I only showed you the basics. Now it's time to move on and show you how to do more useful things with them. So in the video that I showed you, I showed you how you can use four IGBTs to make an inverter to output a square wave. However, if you want to run a device that needs alternating current, you need to output something that's closer to a sine wave. So in this video we're going to talk about pulse width modulated IGBT inverters. And yes, this does count for MOSFETs too. They both work in a similar fashion. We know that pulse width modulation can be used to regulate a circuit's average output voltage. So for example, pulse width modulation is really just regulating the average amount of time that a circuit is on or off. So for example, if the circuit was always on all the time, the output voltage would be full. However, if we use pulse width modulation and reduce the on pulse width to 50% of the time, then that means the average output voltage is going to be about half of the full voltage. So what does this have to do with an inverter and alternating current? You know that alternating current basically consists of a sine wave. The voltage starts at zero, rises up slowly to a peak, then from the peak falls slowly back down to zero. I say slowly because, I mean, it isn't a square wave. It's a sine wave. It's kind of rounded. Using an inverter and not using pulse width modulation, the output would be a square wave. And as I said, alternating current appliances want more of a rounded sine wave versus a square wave. With pulse width modulation, we can simulate a sine wave. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to get us closer than a square wave, for example. So how exactly do we use pulse width modulation to simulate a sine wave? Well, since you know that you can regulate a circuit's average output voltage using pulse width modulation, then we can simulate it with this method. For example, for one side of an IGBT bridge, one side of an IGBT or MOSFET full bridge, if we start the pulse width very narrow to simulate a low voltage, and then slowly increase the pulse width, we can slowly increase the average output voltage. Let me show you what I mean. So when you search the internet for images of pulse width modulated inverters, you usually end up finding a result that looks something like this. However, what they're actually trying to show you is this. A pulse width starts at zero, rises up, and then falls back down. But of course, alternating current consists more of than just one half of a sine wave. It consists of a top half and of a bottom half. So, a real pulse width modulated inverter is actually not that hard to understand. First, for the top half of the sine wave, the pulse width starts at zero, rises up to a peak, and then falls back down to zero. Then there's usually a small delay so the IGBTs or the MOSFETs in the full bridge circuit won't shoot through. And then the same thing happens again. However, instead of using the two IGBTs that were first switched on, now it's switched and transitioned to the other two IGBTs of the full bridge. So in order to make this work, we need basically the same stuff that we needed to make the full bridge inverter in the first place. We need four IGBTs, so we could have two half bridge modules, like these ones. We could have a single full bridge module, or we could have four individual modules. We'll need four gate drivers and four isolated power supplies. Now for using half bridge modules, it might be a little bit complicated to understand, but try to bear with me here. In the full bridge modules, you have the uppers and the lower stage, and then you have two of those, obviously. So for the first IGBT, you want to send the input signal 1 to the lower of the first IGBT and also to the upper of the second IGBT. Now for input 2, you'll connect that to the upper of the first IGBT and the lower of the second IGBT. This creates two distinct inputs. So all you need to do is create a pulse width modulation system that first fires input 1, turns off, and then fires input 2. So input 1 should start at 0, rise to 100, and then fall back down to 0. Then it should stay off. 
Input 2 should do a similar thing. Start at 0, rise to 100, we fall back down to 0 and turn off. And the cycle repeats. And that is how we make a full bridge IGBT or MOSFET inverter simulate alternating current with pulse width modulation. And I say simulate, that's loose, that's a loose term there because, well, let me show you. So this is the output of a full bridge pulse width modulated inverter. So like I said, not exactly a sine wave, but it's closer than a square wave. So let me show you what I'm working with here. Over here is isolated power supplies. It looks like two of them, but there are two in each, so that's four. There's the four isolated supplies and the old full bridge inverter. So as you can see, we have the two half bridge IGBT modules and a couple capacitors there, the bus capacitor and the four gate drivers with the inputs connected as described. So over here, input 1, that's the low side of that first module, is jumped to the high side of the second module. And the high side of this first one is jumped to the low side of the second one. So the input, we have two 12-volt batteries. This is just for demonstration purposes only. The output is running this fan. This is an alternating current fan. I don't know if I can... Let's see. You should be able to see. i get it close as I can. It's 115 volts. 50 or 60 hertz. It's obviously, it's running much slower than that. I don't know the actual output frequency, but I'm assuming that's going to be pretty low. But anyway, it does actually work. It does actually output alternating current. Okay, so this is where the pulse width modulation source comes from. So I wrote a computer program in assembly to cause the computer's parallel port to output pulse width modulation. So the red wire on the right is the first data output of the parallel port, and the red wire on the left is the second data output of the parallel port, and the black wire going in there is just the ground. So that gives us our two separate inputs for the two separate halves of the full bridge. So that is how a full bridge inverter takes direct current and transforms it into alternating current that's a little bit cleaner than a square wave. Now of course you're going to have the obvious questions. How on earth do we make a pulse width modulator that will output this to operate the full bridge correctly? There is a way to do it with analog electronics and separate components, but really the easiest way is to use an IC, an integrated circuit, designed to run a motor controller. I'll put a couple of part numbers up here, or maybe in the description for you guys so you can see. Now, of course the question about output voltage. How do we regulate the output voltage? The output voltage can be regulated simply by regulating the input voltage or by using the proper motor controller IC again. So motor controller IC can limit the maximum and minimum pulse width so you can shape the output just any way you want. Now as far as the output frequency, again that's done by usually an integrated circuit, but really what it is is just changing the time that it takes for the pulse width to rise and fall, so really that's it. Now if you, for example, wanted to run something from batteries and you needed a higher output voltage, you could use a boost converter to boost up the input voltage, or you could use an output transformer to boost up the output voltage. So all in all, it's actually not that hard. It's, it's pretty basic stuff. You just need an integrated circuit or a computer or even analog electronics to generate the signal. The gate drivers and the IGBTs, they really do the rest. So, if you have any questions, you do know where to reach me. And I do thank all of you guys for watching, and all you guys who contribute through email or YouTube or any other, any other way. I really do appreciate it. So, I will be trying to make more, like I keep saying, at the end of all my videos. So, I think I might have one, one more coming up, but it's a little bit not my usual, I guess I should say. But... We'll see how it works, and if it works, it does, and if not, go a different avenue.
But thanks again guys for watching, and I'll see you again soon.